Hi everyone, Donut here, and today we're going to talk about Colin Kaepernick. To be quite honest, I could give two squirrel farts about Colin Kaepernick or the NFL, but I just found something online today I needed to show everyone. Recently, Mr. Kaepernick made this tweet saying that he's going to donate some money to a little foundation called Asada's Daughters. The million dollar pledge, 10 for 10 encore, keeps building. This next sister starred in Blackish, now will be starring in Grownish, and will be attending Harvard this year. Yara Shahidi. Yara, thank you for everything you do for our communities and thank you for being a great example to our youth. Let's hear from Yara where she's donating. Hey guys, it's Yara Shahidi and I heard about the million dollar pledge through family and friends who are already engaged. So I decided to donate to Asada's Daughters, which is an amazing organization based out of Chicago. And I just have to say thank you to Colin for such an amazing idea, but also in engaging all of us and helping contribute to our world. Alright, so actress Yara Shahidi says that this is an amazing organization. She's putting a lot of money into it. Hannibal Burris is and Colin Kaepernick. So naturally, I want to check out exactly what the organization's about. When I first came across this, I recognized the name of Sada. I couldn't remember from where. Started Googling a little bit, and then it hit me. Everyone, if you go over to the FBI's most wanted list, you'll see a woman named Joanne Chesimard. A reward of $1 million has been offered for any information leading to her capture. So what exactly did this woman do to be on the FBI's most wanted list and a reward of $1 million being offered for any information leading to her capture? Joanne Chesimard is wanted for escaping from prison in Clinton, New Jersey, while serving a life sentence for murder. On May 2nd, 1973, Chesimard, who was part of a revolutionary extremist organization known as the Black Liberation Army, and two accomplices were stopped for a motor vehicle violation on the New Jersey Turnpike by two trooper troopers with the New Jersey State Police. At the time, Chesimard was wanted for her involvement in several felonies, including bank robbery, Chesimard and her accomplices opened fire on the troopers. Nothing says being an activist like robbing a bank, right? One of the troopers was wounded by the gunfire and another was shot and killed execution style at point blank range. Chesimard fled the scene but was subsequently apprehended. One of her accomplices was killed in the shootout and the other was also apprehended and remains in jail. In 1977, she was found guilty of first-degree murder, assault and battery of a police officer, assault with a dangerous weapon, assault with intent to kill, illegal possession of a weapon, and armed robbery. She was sentenced to life in prison, but in November 2nd of 1979, she escaped from prison and lived underground before being located in Cuba in 1984. I'm not going to get into the whole politics of why she can't be extradited right now. We're just going to talk about who she is. Why am I bringing up Joanne Tessamar when we were talking about something called Asada's Daughters? Well, that's because her primary alias is Asada Shakur. Asada's Daughters is named after a woman who used to rob banks and killed a police officer execution style at point blank. Sounds like an amazing organization already. Let's take a look at their website. Asada's Daughters is a grassroots intergenerational collective of radical black women located in the city of Chicago. We identify our work as part of the larger Black Lives Matter movement. Oh, the same Black Lives Matter movement that wants to get rid of body cameras and support socialism. Asada's Daughters teaches young black girls how to fight back. Asada's Daughters taught me how to be a leader. Asada's Daughters means the world to me. Asada's Daughters means everything to me. Asada's Daughters is an intergenerational grassroots collective focused on creating an affirming space for young black girls. I'm all for having programs that help young black girls. That is awesome that they have some mentors to look at. It's Chicago, it's a rough city, but is everyone missing the fact that the organization that these these little girls are looking up to was named after a murderous piece of shit this organization is named after a woman who executed a police officer and used to rob banks oh while we're talking about chicago and the police being such a big damn problem in chicago uh so far this year 2018 there have been 194 people shot and wounded 42 people shot and killed in just chicago the police are the problem though right uh oh wait in the year 2018 there's only been one person shot and wounded by the police zero killed one wounded oh but the police are the problem let's let's continue browsing this website that's named after a murderer oh let's click around about us oh let's go to our herstory Asada's Daughters was formed in March 2015 in order to address the shortage in programming and community for women identified young black people in Chicago. That's an odd word to use, programming. 
and Community for Women Identified Young Black People in Chicago. Founded, planned, and operated by black women, Asada's Daughters carries on the tradition of radical, liberatory activism encompassed by Asada Shakur. I love the fact that they're mentoring these girls, and they're feeding them, and they're making gardens with them, they're making their community better. That is so freaking awesome. But to use the word programming and wanting to carry on the tradition of Asada Shakur... I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> they use programming again. We grew out of a critical gap in Chicago of programming for young women to get trained up in the radical political tradition of black feminism and learn how to organize around the demand of abolition. We believe it is our duty to fight for our freedom. We come together and struggle as radical black feminists and organizers under the shared respect, love, and study of Asada Shakur. Once again, a felonious piece of shit who executed a cop. Okay, let's let's start off with Escalate. We believe in the resistance and in the power of civil disobedience. Our campaigns agitate the status quo and directly confront the system of our oppression. Our demands are not requests. They are an assertion of black power and an insistence on self-determination. We encourage and support others to do the same. And if you go over here to Sustain, we believe... Black liberation requires long-term commitment and strategy. We intentionally develop and train young people ages 4 to 19 in the black queer feminist tradition and in the spirit of Asada. We prioritize this work to help the current momentum of the Black Lives Matter movement to carry on into the future. Does anyone else see how screwed up this is? Like, like I'm not the only one that they're teaching 4 to 19-year-olds the teachings of a woman who robbed banks and murdered police officers. What is direct action? Quite simply, direct action is when a group of people work together to fix a problem that directly impacts them. It may be angry. It may be hopeful. It will be confrontational. If you haven't picked up on it yet, that means standing in the middle of the interstate while people are trying to go to work. If you look down here at resources, under the picture of a lady laying in the middle of a highway, you see Beautiful Trouble, a toolbox for a revolution. It's basically a guide on how to be a big asshole in public. It includes and teaches things like creating a blockade, creative disruption of public events, culture jamming, whatever the hell that is, flash mobs, forum theater, strikes, guerrilla projection, hoaxes, infiltration to learn from, expose, or disrupt the meetings of the powerful, invisible theater, strategic nonviolence, and, and many other things. Oh, but we haven't gotten to the best part yet. Let's, let's look at Copwatch. Know your rights and Copwatch. Cool. Resist police violence. Cool. Because this police violence is a problem in Chicago, as we've already looked at. Oh, wait. Make the holes on to whatever I say. 79, 79, 79. Oh, hey, it's a Sada. Plantation. I feel like a, I feel like a maroon woman. I feel like an escaped slave. Because what I, I saw in, in, in the United States in those prisons was slavery. It was black people with chains in cells. It was just poor people, you know, I mean, just stepped on and smashed. I'll never forget what I saw. I'll never forget what I've lived through. I'll never forget what my people have lived through. What? Okay, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Why were you in prison again, Asada? Oh, yeah. For a bunch of felonies and executing a police officer. This is the one thing. We watched this earlier on my morning stream. This is the one thing that I wanted to take a look at with you guys. This whole whistle thing. And I learned a new term today. If you wanted to get young people in your community involved, one thing we used to do is hand out whistles so that it was easier in New York because people live kind of one on top of each other that when you would blow the whistle, people, young people would come out and blow the whistle on cops who are, you know, uh, giving random tickets or just abusing their privileges, which they do all day. Um, and so other kids in the neighborhood would then have whistles and then everyone would blow the whistle. So it would become like a community effort to de-arrest a person. Uh okay. So if anybody didn't catch what she said there, if a bunch of kids blow whistles, then you can de-arrest somebody. I didn't know de-arrest was a term. Pretty much because it doesn't exist. I don't know how many times I've heard you can't unarrest somebody, and a bunch of kids blowing whistles is not going to make the police officer say, well, shit, I was in the wrong. We better take the cuffs off this guy. Here's what they think will happen. Here's what really happens. You can. So we have a grooming where we can say, this person's being arrested here, we need folks to show up, and then you can get a growing crowd. Or I still don't understand this de-arrest thing. It, it, 
so uh, the more people that show up, the more likely the police are just going to not arrest them. All right. I don't want to watch this anymore. We're going to go and look at some of this stuff. Uh, let's look at how to cop watch. It says right here, try to de-escalate the situation, not escalate it. But according to their politics, they're, they want to escalate. They believe in resistance and the power of civil disobedience. I wish they would make up their minds. Do they want to de-escalate the situation or do they want to escalate the situation? Hmm. It sounds like they do some good stuff, but it also sounds like they're programming four to 19 year olds to escalate situations and lay in the middle of the road. I don't know if these celebrities realize what this is named after and exactly what they're teaching young girls. It specifically says they're teaching young people ages four to 19 in the black queer feminist tradition and in the spirit of Asada. Just to sum it all up, Colin Kaepernick, Hannibal Burris, and the other young actress who is in Blackish have donated $45,000 to a cause that's named after a woman who robbed banks and executed a police officer. That also is programming kids 4 to 19 in that woman's spirit. I don't want to go so far as to call it a terrorist cell, but if you're indoctrinating kids with the teachings of a woman who was a felon and did a lot of bad things, that's not, that doesn't sound like a good thing. Oh, but remember, police are the problem in Chicago. Before we get off here, I wanna say thank you so much to everyone who donated to the GoFundMe. I was only expecting to get a few hundred bucks, but it looks like I'm gonna be able to get some pretty good equipment. I am blown away by your support. You are all very, very awesome. Everyone, this is Donut. I'll be streaming tonight at around eight o'clock. Twitch.tv slash Donut Operator. Use your Amazon Prime account to subscribe to me for free, and it gives me a few dollars, which really helps support the channel. Have a fantastic day.